Hello, I'm Michelle Howie from Telstra Dev, Telstra's developer portal. Now Telstra, if you don't know, is Australia's longest serving telecommunications company. I'll get into that in a second. Um, tradi telcos traditionally have pretty simple offerings that everyone knows and loves and uses every day, but our customers are increasingly getting more diverse, especially when it comes to the Internet of Things and asking for simpler ways to interact with us as a telco. So today I'm going to walk us through an API led Internet of Things product that Telstra has, the Telstra Track and Monitor, and we're going to speak to the product manager of the Track and Monitor suite to see how APIs are really important for her customers. And the whole thing is hopefully going to help us with a culture shift um, with the telco space to be more API led. So the topic of interest today is unlocking the Internet of Things with APIs um, as a telco. So I'm personally excited to be talking to you about this today. If you do have any questions or comments after watching this recording, please reach out to me. Um, you can find me at Telstra Dev on Twitter. Uh, Dev.telstra.com is our website as well, and I'll have more contacts at the end. So a little bit about me. I'm Michelle, and I'm here to spread the good word about technology, especially emerging tech like VR, connected cities, um, intelligent transport and robotics, everything in between. Um, I'm Telstra's developer advocate, so here to make sure that the developers who are building amazing things on top of our network are successful and supported in every way I can. Before that, I was in networks engineering at Telstra's 5G Innovation Centre on the Gold Coast, and it was there when Telstra actually launched our 5G network, making it the first 5G network in the country and making Australia the third uh, country in the world to actually provide 5G network to their, their customers, so that was pretty exciting. Um, I really think that technology is what's going to help us solve the biggest problems in the world today. And I believe that network and connectivity underpins all of that technology, which is why I'm really excited to be working with Telstra to save the world one bit at a time. So a bit about Telstra. Um, like I said, Australia's largest telco. Uh, we've been in the game for over 100 years, um, dating back to the 1800s, building Australia's first telegraph lines before we were called Telstra, of course. Um, there's only you know, about 27 million people in Australia, uh, but Telstra has a big share of the retail mobile services with over 18 million services, which is a crazy number, it's a lot. Um, and not only are we in Australia, Telstra has a presence in over 20 other countries um, with our subsea network and our satellite um, points of presence, data centers and things like that. I've personally worked in the Hong Kong office um, and stints in Singapore and Taiwan as well. And there's lots going on overseas. As well as that, Telstra is a global leader in 5G and IoT. I've seen several world firsts that uh, Telstra has done in this space, which is pretty exciting uh, because we do have quite a unique customer base here in Australia, being very uh, sparsely populated, so opposite of dense. Um, and yeah, with with uh, as a telco, it's, it's a lot uh, to be done in this space. So I mentioned IoT, that is the Internet of Things, the billions of physical devices connected to the network. And when you're considering an IoT deployment, one of the most important things is what network are you going to be connected to? And that, of course, depends on your use case, it depends on your battery requirements, your coverage requirements, uh, how often you need to access that device, how much data it's sending, how critical is that data? There's so many things. And a couple of the options are, you know, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, you have unlicensed spectrum, you have the standard 4G and 5G network. Um, when it comes to 5G, as an example for the Internet of Things, uh, as you use higher and higher frequencies of the mobile network, you can send more and more data. And 5G, what that's going to unlock is much higher data rates, you know, high bandwidth, much lower latency, so quicker response times for the network and a greater scale, which is definitely going to enable the Internet of Things. But on the other side of the spectrum, the lower frequency networks, today we have narrowband IoT and LTEM. So they're Telstra's two cellular IoT, low power wide area network offerings. So the benefits that you have if you've got a device on these networks um, for particular use cases is being a lower frequency, you can send data at uh, with much lower power. So that's less battery usage uh, for the device, the end device, and also for the network. Uh, it also enables much greater coverage. So Telstra actually has almost 4 million square kilometres of coverage on their um, narrowband IoT network, which is incredible. Uh, being a cellular network, a licensed spectrum, uh, the security is inbuilt in that network uh, layer. So it saves 
headers uh, being transmitted with all security stuff from the device. Um, as well as that, I talked about 5G being high frequency. Uh, recently, the 3GPP has actually announced that narrowband IoT um, will actually be included in the 5G standards. So you have a lot to look forward to there. So that's that's Telstra IoT and the network side. And that sets a good scene for what we're going to talk about next. So I mentioned Telstra Dev. That's the project that I work on at Telstra. It's Telstra's developer portal. It's unlocking uh, over 100 years of network capabilities and services via APIs. And so there's just a sneak peek into our developer portal there. So it's really important that with a software defined world that's focusing on machine to machine communications and data driven insights, that that data can actually be pulled from somewhere useful. And um, APIs are really the, the key for that. So um, Telstra Dev is where you can see some of the APIs we have uh, on display. You've got the messaging API. so you're able to send an SMS with a few lines of code, meaning that not every single application that uses SMS has to be an expert, but you can actually leverage um, Telstra's you know, network that's been around for over 100 years to actually do that with an API call. Um, in the context of the Internet of Things, you know, the data is, is what's really useful in the Internet of Things to bring data-driven insights. Um, but we've realised that Lots of our customers, they don't want just the IoT device, they want the data that comes with that. So we've got the connected things and track and monitor, which I'll talk about in a bit. We're going to bring the product manager for track and monitor out. So what, what that means for developers, there's a the community around Telstra Dev, which includes forums, tutorials, and best practice sharing through blogs and things like that. Um, but what it enables is rapid prototyping for developers. And we're really abstracting the complexity from the mobile network and enabling developers to come in via API and utilize that. Um, but at the same time, you're getting the security of a telco, the scalability that that enables and the performance underpinning that. So that's the great thing about Telstra Dev. So here's what a traditional telco looks like in my view. This is something I've put up. Um, you know, it's the bread and butter of telco services. You've got phones, you've got text, you've got internet and things like that. Now I've already moved into the IoT space where there's a myriad of devices that can connect to the network and what you're wanting on the other end is some application that brings data driven insights. So Telstra already connects you know, vehicles and drones to the internet and the network they need relies on a network that is much more stable and lower latency than we've ever seen before. Um, things like a 5G core is going to enable that even further. But if you want insights from these devices, traditionally you have to be presented with you know, a dashboard, which is great for quick onboarding, for smart insights. Um, it's really easy to access information when you're presented with a dashboard, so it's great. But it's not as flexible. So providers, when they're given this information, dashboards are fantastic, but they shouldn't be locking their customers in for every different asset class, every different provider having a different dashboard, especially if you consider the infinite, infinite possibilities with the Internet of Things and all the different connectivity requirements. So cross-vendor interoperability is really important, making the data from IoT devices available via APIs is really important. So this is what I would say that an API-led telco in an in a IoT environment would look like. Um, the network complexity is abstracted, sort of blurred out a little bit there, and you have the developers being able to access um, their own data via APIs, and that dashboard at the end there can actually be on interoperable with other vendors, other IoT data sources. So interacting with your devices, getting insights from programmable interfaces is really important uh, for seamless you know, IoT deployments. Um, Telstra has been setting down the path of APIs for a few years now since the launch of that developer portal. Uh, and when we speak to our customers, especially in the IoT industries, uh, heavily you think about ag tech, you think about mining, you think about transport and logistics, they're choosing APIs as the biggest enabler for their businesses. So we're trying to get out of the way, get that to them so they can keep doing their job as they need to. Um, and modern businesses are increasingly wanting to be driven um, by APIs and repeatable, and you can see why. So let's hear from Lauren, who is the product manager for Telstra's track and monitor solution on how her product has been enabled by APIs for their customers. Hi, I'm Lauren from Telstra. In IoT at Telstra, we build products that leverage our strengths and our right to play. That is, our network is the best in Australia, that we innovate, 
and we have very high standards on data security. Myself, I have a DevOps team of around 25, no way co-located, spread across Australia and offshore. My product, Telstra Track and Monitor, is an asset tracking solution. A little bit of history. If you step back a couple of years in Australia, the cost of asset tracking and monitoring was cost prohibitive. The 3G and 4G network solution didn't support long battery life, meaning while customers used telematics solution to track their powered vehicles, tracking of non-powered assets was not feasible. After focus on low powered networks, Telstra now have an LTEM or CAT M1 enabled coverage footprint of around 3 million square kilometers. And our Bluetooth finding community had over a million finding points last month with over 180 million observations. So that's really changed our asset tracking market. Our enterprise customers demand a set and forget solution. Battery life of more than five years for non-powered. Having asset tracking that's small, cheap, and doesn't need a power source, it sounds simple, and it is, but it didn't exist a few years ago. I provide Telstra Track and Monitor as high quality hardware units on a monthly subscription. That sub subscription includes connectivity, it includes use of uh, user interfaces, which are both web portal and mobile app, and it includes API access. What this means is our customers don't need to set up their own IoT platform tenancy, they don't need to activate SIM cards, they don't have anything really to manage, they just need to turn on their device and log on. With this product, we focus on solution rather than the traditional SIM card. We launched Telstra Track and Monitor around two and a half years back in October 2018 with one device, our solar tracking unit. We launched our API access to our customers two months later. It was always important to us to launch with API access, but since then we've expanded. I've got five hardware units in market. Our three LTEM units are flexible to change profile over the air. For example, the solar tracking unit can also be used as a Bluetooth gateway. Our CAD M1 tracking unit, pictured here, can, can track very infrequently. So for example, once per day is very popular, or it can be tracked, it can track based on motion or high G-force events, for example. Just showing a little picture to show you the example in, in size compared to an iPhone or, or AirPods. So we've just launched indoor tracking. So our customers can leverage their existing Wi-Fi networks on site and Telstra's network as the asset moves outdoor. But if we come back to the basics, we can tell you where your asset is, where it has been, we can notify you when it leaves its geofence, you can monitor its temperature and, and so on. Our web portal is basic and it's easy to use. I can laugh at this, but in reality, we design for people who don't use computers much. Some of our user testing highlighted a key persona is guys in the warehouse who don't have their glasses on. And for some of our customers, how we've designed our solution, it's awesome. They 100% interact with our web portal and app and get everything they need but they're only a subset. Other customers of ours want asset tracking and telematics, or they want asset management and job scheduling and location and so on. And then many customers just want to know the last known location and add that to their existing systems. Our product user interface can never be everything that anyone may want it to be. How could I even have the capacity or expertise in my team to compete in all of those spaces? So it's my job to know what functions to build and more importantly, where to stop. Everything else is enabled via APIs through our value-added resellers, partners, or directly by customers. For example, if you want a telematic solution for your vehicle, plus some non-powered asset management, I would introduce you to our reseller at MT Data. Or if you'd like to schedule the use of your trucks, trailers, plant and machinery across, across your workforce, or ensure you know where your equipment is, who it's assigned to on each day, and that it's taking efficient paths from point A to B, I would introduce you to our reseller, WHG Group. 
But without numbers, what I say is just talk. So what I'll share is at least 42% of our devices are being interacted with via API. My largest customer uses our user interface and also interacts via API. They can see where their trailers and rail carriages are. They also pull this information into their systems. My next two largest customers are actually resellers. So interacting only via API and I can only guess how many customers they are supporting on my behalf. So what's changed API wise since we launched? Um, first for me, performance is the number one thing. So what you can see here is the growth that we experienced in the second half of last year, and that just continues to grow every single month. So performance improvements are, are my number one concern when it comes to API. Second, what we've focused on is sharing sensors. So all of the non-location type data, whether it be temperature, speed, altitude, etc. I just need to be clear that we have more to do. We can always do more and do better. And as an Agile project manager, you can be sure that everything is in the backlog. So just to close out what I've shared about Track Monitor, I wanted to share a couple of things that make me happy as a product manager. Firstly, every time a reseller gives me a demonstration of their own system. So I've seen a couple of new ones in the last few weeks. They're always really proud of their solution. And why not? It, it meets the, the need of the customer. But when they show me how they expose location into their solution, I love seeing this. The second memory I wanted to share is when I sent one of our reseller a new device to try. He called me up and he said, hey, Lauren, it's pretty cool, but what do I need to tell our tech guys so we can interface with it? I said, you already do. Exact same API, just enter its serial number into your system. He did. He immediately got its location on the screen. It was awesome because it was easy. And that's really comes to the, the end of what I've got to share today. API is absolutely enabler of my product. APIs need to be simple to use and APIs need to be easy to use. Thanks everyone. Michelle, back to you. All right. So we can now see how APIs are really critical to not only the telco ecosystem, but to the customers who are using IoT for data-driven insights, and they might happen to be on a telco network. And yes, there are a lot of APIs out there, especially when it comes to the Internet of Things. Um, but I wanted to share the Tracker Monitor story with you guys today and the Tracker Monitor API, um, because as a, as a telco, as a legacy telco, as a very old, you know, 100-year-old telco, um, we realised that our legacy and our tenure is not going to outwin any battles in the Internet of Things. Telstra has a lot to provide in the IoT space, um, but only if we're going to continue enabling collaboration and cooperation, and adding value to our customers um, instead of just trying to lock them in. So this is what the API program is setting out to do, and this is what I think really is needed um, in the telco space a bit more. And central to all of this is, of course, the experience of the developers, the developer experience. And that's something Telstra is taking very seriously. Um, Telstra is investing more than ever into our developer experience, um, starting up an entirely new mission um, dedicated to that. Um, we're always trying to be more customer focused than ever before by regularly talking to developers and getting customer feedback into our roadmap as they're going. Um, I can't wait to share with you guys over the coming months and the coming year what we've got up our sleeves um, to, to launch to help improve this developer experience with our APIs. Um, I'll give you a spoiler hint. It has a lot to do with documentation and support experiences. But I do welcome you to take a look at Telstra Dev um, at our developer portal. Uh, follow us on Twitter to see what we're up to. Share what you're up to as well and how your API program is going and any insights that and feedback that you have. Um, I welcome you to be part of the Telstra Dev community. Uh, like I said, on Twitter, there's our website and there's our email address too where you can get in touch with me uh, or with Lauren as well. So thank you again. Thanks for having us at TAD Summit in 2021. Look forward to seeing you in person uh, maybe in future years and telling you more about our other API uh, learnings and insights. All right, thank you. Bye.